at the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva is today wrapping up discussions on a fact-finding mission on Iran's violent repression of protests. The mission says it uncovered murders, torture and forced disappearances that amount to crimes against humanity. Now, investigators focused on Iran's response to mass protests over the death of Gina Massa Amini in 2022, who they say died from physical violence while in custody. Since then, women have continued to speak up, including this woman seen in a hospital clinic. She demanded that a cleric delete photos he had taken of her there without her head covering. Another woman who spoke out against authorities has fled Iran and is now in Berlin, seeking treatment for an eye injury she suffered at the hands of Iranian security forces. Journalist Bamdad Esmaili met her here in Berlin. He screamed and said, go away or I'll shoot you in the eye. He targeted my eye with his evil smile on his face and then he shot me, intentionally, in the eye. I have been thinking about the whole thing and wondering why he shot me. Kosar Eftekhari was part of the Iranian uprising, labeled Women, Life, Freedom. She was blinded in the right eye during one protest. She eventually made her way to Berlin. Eftekhari is 24. She had been a student in Tehran and a theater performer. The killing of Gina Masa Amini sparked the protest movement against the Islamic Republic. After I heard calls to protest, I joined them on October 12th. I had horrible anxiety. When I reached the sidewalk, I found out they had blocked it. My heart was racing. I was scared of the anti-insurgency forces. I wanted to pass by these forces and I had my hijab down on my shoulder. Once I got closer, one of them pushed me from behind. He shot me completely intentionally in the eye with that evil smile. I heard people, and at the same time I was hearing whistling in my ears. Protesters were chanting. One security force member had just shot me in the eye. We took a taxi. I looked at my face in the mirror. I was bleeding from my face and my eye was swollen. I didn't want to believe the person that I was seeing was me. Kosar Eftekhari had lost the sight in her right eye, and with a warrant out for her arrest, she fled to Iraqi Kurdistan and then to Germany, thanks to a humanitarian visa. I covered the mirrors in my house with newspapers for months after it happened. I didn't want to see my face with the injured eye. But actually, during those days that I was suffering spiritually and psychologically, I was thinking that my eye is a mark of the crime and the cruelty committed by the Islamic Republic. Wherever I go, I will be living proof of the violent oppression in Iran. I was suffering a lot of pain, but was thankful to God that I was chosen to show the criminality and terrorism in the Islamic Republic. A new chapter has begun in Kosar Eftekhari's life, a chapter she already believes is a bright one. 
And we're going to get more now from my colleague Niloufar Gulami, who is from Iran. Welcome, Niloufar. Good to see you. Um, we know that there have been multiple instances of extreme uh, violence against women in Iran. The UN has been holding the session that I just mentioned to discuss these human rights uh, violations. Could you give us a, a few more examples of the, the, the type of crimes that the regime is being accused of? Yeah, Anya, what we have seen is just one example. So far, we know that human rights organization could fact check 138 cases of people who lost an eye during this protest. Uh, among them, eight were children, and uh, like only in Zahedan massacre that is known uh, as Bloody Friday, 15 people lost one or both eyes. And other human rights violations mentioned in the report, including extrajudicial and unlawful killings and murder, unnecessary use of uh, force and disproportionate use of force, arbitrary deprivation of liberty, uh, torture, raped, enforced disappearance and gender persecution. And also the committee says that they found women uh, and girls subjected to rape and other form of sexual and gender-based violence. So including um, gang rape, rape with object, uh, forced nudity and groping. And we know 551 protesters have been killed by security forces. Uh, among them, at least 49 were women and 68 were children. And these are only the official numbers that we have and human rights activists speculated to be uh, way more. And uh, in addition to that, regime also executed at least nine young men uh, from uh, December 2022 to January 2024. And uh, the Iranian regime, uh, to Iranian regime's reaction to this report was like always, and they said it is politically motivated and biased. Okay, some really quite disturbing statistics there. The, this report from the, the prelim, preliminary report from the UN fact-finding uh, mission is de demanding the application of universal jurisdiction. Can you explain to our viewers what that would mean? Yeah, this universal jurisdiction uh, principle allows a national court to prosecute anyone for atrocities uh, regardless of where they were uh, committed. Okay, and, and explain to us how that would work. I mean, how can the application of, of, of universal jurisdiction actually help victims of violence um, hold the Iran Iranian regime accountable? Mm -hmm. This is actually the, um, something that could cause some troubles for the Iranian regime. Like, uh, it means that uh, anyone involving in uh, uh, repressing protesters could be persecuted. Like, for example, they cannot freely uh, travel to Western countries anymore without uh, the fear of being arrested and holding accountable. So, um, this law and this principle was the same law that allowed uh, human rights activists uh, to persecute and arrest Hamid Nouri. Uh, he was a, a key figure in uh, 1988 uh, mass executions of political prisoners in Iran. And uh, that was a really a historic uh, victory for survivors and family members of people who were executed. And he was sentenced to life in prison and he is in a, a Sweden in prison at the moment. Okay. Okay. Nilifar, we've just got a, a little, a few moments left, but just give us a sense of how women in Iran feel now about uh, their lives in the Islamic Republic and, and how things have changed since the, the protests in 2022. Even though the regime has increased the harassment of women because of not observing the mandatory hijab rule, more women come to the streets uh, taking off their headscarves. I'm talking to many of them or following the discussions on social media media and many say that they are they are willing to uh, fight for uh, their basic rights but they would need actual international support otherwise it would have it would be uh, so costly and hard for them to uh, fight this regime because it is the regime that doesn't mind suppressing their own citizens using every shape and form of violence DW's Nilufa Gulami thank you so much for that